Ever wondered how search and rescue crews help those in need? We visited our CHC friends at Sligo Coast Guard Helicopter Base in Ireland and had an eye-opening time finding out. I'm David Thomas-Jacks. Keep watching and you'll see there is no question that these guys have got your back, whatever the weather, night and day. My name is Porek Slattery and I'm one of the pilots here at the Sligo Coast Guard Helicopter Base Rescue Woman 8. So there's four helicopter bases in Ireland. Uh, there's Sligo, Shannon, Waterford in Dublin. And we all fly the S92, which is just here behind me. So there's four and a half crews, so it's a 24-7, 365 service. So there's on duty at any one time, there's two pilots, there's two paramedic winch crew, and there's two engineers. Our patch here in the Northwest, is pretty much kind of from Belfast all the way around to Galway Bay. So we've got a, a large chunk of the country for the inland bit. And then for the overwater bit, then we go out anything up to 250 miles radius of action from fuel. So it's a big old patch. We do a bit of everything, so we do uh, so maritime search and rescue, which is uh, people at sea, um, fishermen, things like that. We do a lot of coastal stuff, uh, so missing persons maybe, um, and a lot of mountain stuff and inlands, lakes, rivers, everything. But also we provide a, a secondary service to the National Ambulance Service, so like a flying ambulance, um, where we'd transfer people from either hospital to hospital or Indeed, we might even end up in their back garden or a field beside their house. So we do a bit of everything. And then, of course, part of our remit is Coast Guard water safety, like life jacket awareness, water awareness. And we can land in schools to brief kids on, on water safety and awareness and things like that. So we do a bit of everything. So it's, it's hard to quantify which, which bit's the best bit. So we've got two hoists. There's, just, there's about 100 metres of cable on that. Also on board then, we have some thermal imaging cameras, some standard cameras and we also have a, a night sun, which is just a, a giant torch, basically. So if we're out and about, we utilize all that equipment depending on the time of day or night. We also have night vision goggles. So when we're out at night time, it helps us see in the dark. And so we use that combination of equipment to end up at a casualty location. And once we're on board, they end up in a, in a flying ambulance and we have all the equipment that goes with that. Each weather condition kind of brings its own sort of job profile. So on the nice sunny days, we invariably end up looking for a missing child who's, who's at the ice cream van. Um, and on a stormy day, I suppose, we're possibly tasked to an offshore vessel, maybe with someone who's injured on that. So on a nice sunny day, when it, the weather is quite still, it's actually a bit more complicated to hover because when we hover, our downdraft is basically blowing straight down and when it hits the ground it kind of spreads out. So if we're hovering over someone on a nice still day, it's very, very windy underneath the aircraft. Whereas on a windier day, it blows all the downwash back and it's actually easier and, and safer actually to hover over someone on a, on a windier day. Invariably it's more difficult at night time just because even with the night vision goggles your peripheral vision gets lost so you're not able to glance or scan as quickly or as easy as what during the day. All four of us carry night vision goggles and that's so if you can imagine say if we're searching for a missing person and um, the two pilots will be eyes out looking for the missing person, the winch operator will be door open, um, eyes out and the winch man might even be actually looking over his shoulder or looking out the left hand window as well. Meanwhile the winch man is controlling the night sun and also the thermal imaging camera. So we have the night vision aid and then we have the thermal vision aid as well. We're here to help, I suppose, and no matter what happens, there'll always be someone who needs a bit of help, be it the intra-hospital stuff where a person's already in a place of safety and just needs to be moved to a, a different place of safety, shall we say. So there's always a need for a transfer like that. And obviously, if the public are enjoying themselves, be it the guy who's out in a stormy day in the really windy weather, say kite surfing or windsurfing, are the guys who are waiting for that weather to come. I mean, they're, they're the guys who are really good windsurfers and kite surfers, and that's the weather they need and want and chase, sometimes even around the world, because that's, that's what they do, and that's fine. And they'll bring all their safety teams with them to support that operation. But by the same token, you'll have a person who's going up a hill for the first time, or the person who's out on a mountain on a sunny day, because that's their activity. Either of those two profile of people could require a hand, you know?
sometimes obviously we, we get people to come back just to say thanks which is lovely. Um, we'll get a lot of cards and, and uh, drawings and stuff like that. There was one lady who, um, she rang us here and she said, can I come in for a look around? I said, yeah, so no problem. So we brought her in and love you old lady. But as it turns out, this old lady was the, was the 999 caller who, who witnessed the person in trouble and rang 999. But she said, her husband came in with her and her husband said she hadn't slept in three days because she was worried about us. Because she thought by dialing 999 she was putting us in danger. You know, it was lovely and sweet and she was going, are you okay and all that. So we brought her in, we showed her around and she went away settled, I suppose. She went away, you know, in the knowledge that without worry, basically. We're here to help, I suppose. And no matter what happens from time to time, everyone needs a bit of help. If you'd like to see more, subscribe. I'm David Thomas Jacks. Thanks for watching.